Okay, it's Dave Moss with BIC Trikes. Today we're going to show how to build the brackets on a 1100B Star. And the brackets I'm talking about are going to be for the bike that has the hard the saddlebags that fit on this bracket here. It's a soft saddlebag, but it bolts on the bottom and on this top, so you can't run our normal one down at the back end. So, and of course, there's usually a peg, and I'll show you on the other side. This side here, you'll see there's a peg right here. I pull this off and we'll rebuild this peg and then you'll notice that this brackets right here and you got the two right there now I'm gonna let you know right off the bat I do not use the stock bolts on these I pull these out these are the stock bolts and there's a couple reasons why first thing is is that they usually don't make these much longer than the thing it goes to so these right here and they're allen wrenches which means that you can strip them easy if you're trying to really torque them down and then of course uh, they need to be a quarter inch longer because we're going to add a quarter inch flat steel across here and it's going to come out to right about here and that's where we'll make our bracket and, and bolt up to and I'll show how to do that on this video but that's that's what we're going to make right here so it's going to have to be a quarter inch longer so I get these right here and you can get these at Royal King uh, any place you get your hardware at your bolts and such goes Royal King um, tractor supply 10.9 so it can handle the weight the the pressure being torqued down and i also if you'll notice that this one i've already done one i pull these out because they strip out easy and go and replace them with the 10.9 uh, um, bit two now this is an eight millimeter uh these are six millimeters uh with 13s on this and with uh um i think tens on those and then i'll do that because i don't want to have to worry about these stripping on me or being loose i want this super tight and I've noticed that when I take some of these off, these will be, some of them will even be loose right here from just shaking. And then I'm gonna put this, here's where that foot peg was, we'll build it. And then you don't have to replace the original ones on those. Sometimes I do, but we're just gonna put a quarter inch piece of metal and that's usually what these are. The pegs are almost a quarter inch, see that? So we're just gonna make the same thing. That's a quarter inch, we're gonna do a quarter inch. So you don't have to replace these. If you want to, you can. A lot of times uh, people just figure, why not? But so that's how we're going to do that. I'm going to build this thing. We're going to show how to do it. We're going to build the foot peg here with it. Then I'm going to make the bracket here and show what you do on the length and how you build it. And then we'll bracket that. Then all you got to do is just throw your saddlebag back on. Now it's going to it's going to be a little bit of a pain to get the bolts on the top end. You basically bolt it on the bottom, which holds. We'll, we'll put the you sandwich the quarter inch piece of metal that's going to go across here. Saddlebag, bolt it down. Then. You'll come up here and you'll have to make force this down just a little bit because it's just a little bit off since we went a quarter of an inch higher and you broke those in and then you ain't got to worry about it she's not going to move so we're going to show that process today as we build this one we'll we'll get back and show you exactly what we're doing so we have just went ahead and set the rear peg bracket up and I have a video if you bought the DIY kit that tells you how to build this part here. So I'm not gonna go over that, but I've got it ready to tack on here, as you can see. Got it ready to tack on down here. And then this is the new rear peg, and the only things you wanna make sure is, is that you are at level. And level, so when you put the, uh, I think it's powder coated or painted, sorry. I think it's powder coated or painted. You put the rubber piece right here and then the uh, passenger's foot doesn't get tired because it's not perfectly level. So that's set up there. We're gonna weld that up. I'm gonna tack it. I've got something to cover. Always cover your chrome. So I've got some heat shield that I'll put in here. I slide in between this, covers all the chrome. When I tack it so I don't have spatter because this stuff's tin, it will catch spatter and it'll, it'll leave it in there and ruin the chrome. So you don't want that. But yep, so you tack this up, weld it. And once you get it welded, this one's done. I'll go do the same thing to the other side, and then we'll talk about the end. But like I said, all you're doing is now you're just tacking it up. And then after it gets tacked up, this gets tacked up and welded across the top. Then I'll take this off and weld them out. But we'll show that a little later. So this is the front peg. Okay, here we are. I just finished welding this out. So you can see it's welded completely out. It's part of it. This is gonna be the new peg. And as you can see, because of the way I do it, it'll slide right in on both sides and bolt right up. Show that on the other side too. You'll see. 
and these just slide right up they're welded bolt right up so that front that's how you do the front pegs on these <clears throat> any of them they have to replace the front peg you pretty much do that same sequence now on the v star 1100s i like to put it in front sometimes i'll put it even it's just according where the pegs are going to land and such but it just makes the tire where it's going to go forward or backwards you don't have to put it in front like this you can put it on top of you can move it back here and then put two plates i've done it before where it's here and they bolt in this way it's really up to you it there's no um you have to do it this certain way this is just the way i like to do them uh it makes it where i like the rim and tire where it is because i like the rim and tire just to let you guys know to be a little bit offset so that tire hits first then these tires hit it helps out on speed bumps and prevents you from being able to spin the rock out or something out from under the tire and you get no grip so we found that that always keeps your grip so these are just a little bit behind and you see and on these I like to make it to when I put the fender on, it lands right about even with that fender. It just looks better to me. It's the, that's the reason why I do it there. So just to let you know, so we're gonna go ahead and we'll build the back pegs, back brackets, sorry. Once we build the back brackets, we're gonna show how to do that. Okay, we're starting the back bracket now, and you'll notice that I use an inch and a half angle iron by eighth inch thick. Now, I used to use a quarter inch flat steel, the same length, so I make it long enough that it, it uh, an inch and a quarter could go in the back of here, no big deal, and come out, but I find that it's harder to put the saddlebags down, and this inch and a half is just as strong as the angle iron if you bolt it down in both places. Now, I put temporary bolts in it on this. I have the saddlebag off. These are not the bolts that will go into it because these aren't near long enough. And like I said, I add usually an eighth to a quarter of an inch to the bolts that they had to make sure it goes through all the way because sometimes they just barely make it. Uh, so you can use a quarter inch um, flat bar going across here if you want to. And then you just put the square things all the way up against there and weld it. That can be easier, but it is harder to put the saddlebag on. This inch and a half really doesn't isn't noticeable that well. It's, it is more noticeable than the uh, flat bar. You don't see the flat bar at all. You see the pipe coming out. But I've, I've found that this is a better way of doing it uh, for putting the saddlebag on. So I'm going to bolt it in, and I push it all the way forward, bolt it down, bolt it down, and she's solid. And then, you can see I've done it on both sides. And pretty much how I do a mark in these is I put the angle iron up here, go from underneath on the non-pop side and mark them, pull them out, drill the holes, check it. If it works, take the other angle iron, flip it upside down on top of this, mark it, drill the holes, and then there you go. It should be just fine. Um, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get an inch and a quarter square tubing. You'll be here while it off and it'll come and it'll hook up to the bracket. So it's pretty much the exact same way from there. Now we got our, our place that's going to be solid that this was. So we're going to build this part right here for this back end. So it will have on this outside edge here coming up and then over and on this side coming up and then over and it'll make a, uh, you know, a real nice. Now I will say this, you're going to notice that the saddlebag bracket's are a little different. This one's actually closer in because it's shorter here and that's because the actual back end of the bike is offset. So to make it look right, you'll notice that this one is wider. So this is gonna be closer to this thing right here. And this one will be farther away. So if you get this and you're like, oh my lens, the uh, right hand side is shorter on the thing. I must have done something off square. Nope, it's the brackets because these are actually off center. The tiger is off center a little bit. So to make that up, and the reason for that is the drive shaft. As you can see, you have that drive shaft that pushes the tire that way. So to make up for it, they actually just make the saddlebag bracket a little wider on this side than they do on this side. And then you put the saddlebags on, nobody's the wiser. It's about a quarter of an inch or half an inch long wider. But just to let you know, that's, that's how that works because of the frame. So don't freak out if they're not identical in size when you go to build this bracket. So now I'm gonna go ahead and we're gonna measure. I'm gonna send this, a square up this from here, go up, and then I'm gonna measure, and then I'm gonna make that, and then I'm gonna do the same thing here. Now sometimes on this, if they're close enough, if this is close enough to this, I just run the bar, but it looks like it's gonna be a little bit off. So if it is, we'll do the inch and a quarter square tubing. But we'll show that now. 
like I said, uh, this is pretty much how we do it. And then once we get done with this, we just put the saddlebags on here and then drill the bolts through and it sandwiches it. So then it won't move. So it's the exact same. And you can see if you're this far, you're pretty solid right now. It's, it's not the whole thing moves, but this is just to give it that extra oomph. Okay, so here we are on the left-hand side on the rear end. Now, it looks like it's done, but it's not. But basically what I did was I made a spacer because it's really close. You can see, so I only had to make a half-inch spacer. Um, and then I drilled the hole through the spacers. Then I put, uh, then I marked it here and drilled the hole here. I want this to be level and this to be a little bit lower. And the reason why is because the saddlebag goes across here. I don't want this pushing the saddlebag up. And then what I did was I put the bolt in. And as you can see, I welded the nut on the back end of this. Now this is not welded yet or tacked in, but you'll notice I have a spacer here. That is a quarter inch spacer. And the reason why is because there's a weld right here. So you can't get flush up against this and flush up against that. I always make sure it's flush here. And then I just put a quarter inch spacer. And when I weld this in, I'll make two passes weld here. That will attach the spacer to the metal and then weld right here, which will also attach the spacer and the weld I just did to the frame. That right there will be stout enough that it won't move. And then this side will be done as far as bracketing. See, it's just that simple. Pull this off, mark the hole, make your spacer. Once you, and you might ask, how am I doing that? On this side, you'll see. I take a clamp and I clamp it up. I level it. And you can see this side here, and I told you these are offset. So you can see that this side, if you look up there, see how long that is? And if you look on this side, see how flat that is? There's no bend, no long bend. Well, that's the reason why we're offset. So this here will be wider. So I'll make a, I'll make a, uh, a bracket comes out here. I have the, the nut that built in just like that over there because it's long enough that I can do that. So this is where I get my measurement for. So I'll measure from here to here, take a quarter inch off because I'm going to add this to it. And once I add that to it, that will be the quarter inch. And then I will just simply bolt it in here, put up against this, clamp it again, get it where I want it. And on this one, I'll tack weld it, covering the fenders once again, or covering the chrome rims, the chrome exhaust once again. And then I'll set it like I did before, like I did over there, I'll put a quarter inch underneath here and then tack and weld that up. So that's how I get my measurements. I simply put it on there. And once again, you're just gonna kind of wanna make sure that you are level. You can do it, it doesn't have to be level, but level makes it easy to slide in and get what you need. If it's off level, let's say it's kicked this way a little bit, then when you go to slide it in, this will go this way, it's harder to slide it in. It will bolt down because you're bolting it before you weld it. But see, level, and that's the main thing. Uh, and then I'll have this and I'll weld it up and then we'll have that side. So you can see how I got my, my inches. I did the same thing here. I had that bolt, I had that, um, uh, basically locked in and then i measured and seen it was a half inch so then i just simply made the spacers because a half inch isn't enough to get the bolt through with the nut and such so then it go it went on the back side this one will not go on the back side it'll be on the front side as far as where it bolts up to but it equals out being the same so i hope this helps i'm going to show what it looks like finished and then uh you'll know exactly how to bolt up or how to build the brackets to a v star 1100 and once again when you take uh, these things off, you just take the four bolts off and you'll slide this right back. You'll slide it back, lift it up, and it will clear the saddlebags because you can see the front end's a little bit shorter than the, than the back end. And the back end's gonna clear the saddlebags because it's gonna be right even with it. So you'll clear the saddlebags, you'll slide it in, lock it back up. So that's how we do it. Um, and then we'll show you what the finished product looks like. Okay, here we are and we are done. So the brackets are built. So you can see, it's welded up, drag down, weld it up. And that's what the weld looks like with that spacer in there I showed you. Two weld pass, hold strong, weld it up all the way around. It'll be all welded underneath when it's done. This is the spacer, because it was too narrow. Pull straight down, once again, weld it up all the way around. So this is it. And as you can see, I don't know if I can get this far enough, but I can't, you can't move this thing just like i showed on other video videos with the v-star 1100 that white one so if you haven't seen it ours compared to the uh safer wholesalers uh outlaw kit and just showed the big difference but uh so that's how you build them on the 1100 v-stars 
you replace the pegs, bolt it in, and we'll go down. And then you take the, now I will, when I finish this up, it goes to powder coat, comes back, I will have the saddlebags on it. And of course, you'll see the video of this on regular YouTube of the finished product, but I'll have the saddlebags, you slide that in, you line up the hose, and you run the saddlebag bolts right through there, bam, bam, and then that holds them in. These are just temporary bolts for now, they're not near long enough. And what I do is I go ahead and get bolts that are quarter inch longer than the stock. I do change out the, I don't like um, Allen wrench heads. They strip out too easy. For these right here, because they're sturdy, and these are 10-9, so this thing ain't gonna go nowhere. So, yep, just showing you exactly what the finished product looks like. I hope you've enjoyed it. Once again, uh, you can check out our website at bictrikes.com. If you like it, hit like, subscribe, we'd appreciate it. Also, we've got merch on our website uh, we're trying to get our brand out there so if you like what you see and you like the idea of bic trikes brothers in christ uh buy a shirt support our support our channel support our uh our business by buying a shirt getting our name out there like i said we're trying to get our brand out we appreciate all you guys uh bic stands for brothers in christ where jesus christ gets all the glory thank you so much and god bless